Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to start a new series, uh, I'm going to call it Kello Talks, where basically I'm going to give my opinion on a certain thing that's going on within football. Today I will be speaking about the England situation, uh, mainly about Gareth Southgate as the manager and some of the tactics he employs with the England team. I'm mainly mainly going going to be focusing on um, our last game against Denmark and just give my kind of like opinion on it. Not only about Southgate, but are about the players who are on the team as well. And yeah, I'll just go from there. So Gareth Southgate has had criticism coming ever since he took the job. FA have always wanted to have a yes man in charge of England because they want everything to be done their way. Uh, they're never going to let someone like. I don't know, Jose Mourinho take charge of England because he's not a yes man. Gareth Southgate's exactly that. Uh, but yeah, Gareth Southgate's had it coming at least since the World Cup because yes, we got to the semi-final and it was brilliant. I, 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 it was one of the best summers I had. It was uh, 2018, the summer, peak life, brilliant. But as much as we got to the semi-final of the World Cup, we had such an easy run in that as soon as we came up against a half decent team in Croatia, we looked awful. We looked like the England team that everyone's always known us to be. So everyone was thought, everyone was thinking, oh it's coming home, football's coming home. No it wasn't coming home. You could tell in some of the performances that we had already. Uh, we, we beat Colombia, yeah fair enough, but in some of the other World Cup matches uh, it just wasn't good. Uh, Harry Kane won the golden boot but it was like the most abysmal golden boot ever because he just scored so many pens and tap-ins. It wasn't really like he wasn't the best player in the tournament, he just got, got the most goals. So, my opinion on Southgate is he is not suited to England manager. I think what he did well, I think this is why people hold him in such a great degree in terms of like England manager, is that he connected both media and the England squad, finally, when it was during the World Cup. Um, that's easily the best thing he's done when he's been, whilst he's been manager of England, because for so many years the media in England have been so against the English football team. There's there's never really any focus on the games itself. It's focusing on like Raheem Sterling's gun tattoo, or some of the issues that's going on in the back room, or the Joe Gomez Raheem Sterling coming together that happened a, a couple a, a seasons back, like. They never focus on the important things of the England of the England team. So I have to give credit where credit's due. Gareth Southgate did that brilliantly during the 2018 World Cup, where the media just weren't slanning us off like the entire time. We actually had like good coverage in, in British media for once. But yeah, I think tactical wise is where he, he falls short. He's got plan A, and that's it. His plan A is let's play boring football, let's bore out the opponent, and then maybe snatch a, a lucky goal. The game against Denmark was a clear, obvious reason why this does not work. I mean, to be fair to him, he wasn't helped by his team. Harry Maguire getting a, getting a red card was just awful. I'm sorry, Alex. Yeah, your player, Harry Maguire, absolute waste of £80 million. Harry Maguire, not only was his red card like awful in this particular game, he's had an awful few weeks for him, to be fair. He's not started this season very well, in the slightest. I don't think he should have been called up for the international team anyway. They should have had uh, Tomori and Joe Gomez as the centre-backs for England. I know Gomez has had a torrid time against uh, Aston Villa, but he's still had a better season so far than Harry Maguire. Uh, and then Rhys James, the guy who plays for Chelsea, the right back, also got a red card, but th th that was deep into added time, it was like 94th minute. But still, two red cards in an, in an England game at Wembley. Abysmal, awful performance, absolutely dreadful. <sighs> yeah, Gareth Southgate should not be England coach. It's been that way for a while. Just to add insult to injury, we've got a couple players on the England squad who are breaching COVID-19 rules. You just shouldn't be doing it. I don't condone what the media have done with with them, how they've used them as a way of attacking the England team again. And I also don't condone how Southgate dealt with it either. I think if you're gonna deal with your players for breaching certain rules, you deal with it behind closed doors. You don't do it on the media in front of everyone to see. Yes, fair enough, it was a completely wrong thing for them to do, but they're still young guys. I know it's not really a good excuse, but they've still got plenty to learn. 
um, and to out them in public like that, it, it just wasn't on. It reminds me of what Jose Mourinho did to Luke Shaw at Manchester United. It's just, it's not on. You shouldn't be doing that to your own player at all. I don't care whether it's national team or club level. Another issue that they have is Gareth Southgate continuously experiments with the formations. This is a recipe for disaster when it comes to football tactics. If you're going to adopt a certain tactic, stick with a certain formation, or at least have like another, a backup formation in case things don't go well on the pitch. But to experiment with them game on game on game, it, it's a recipe for disaster because all the players are just going to get so confused. They don't know what the tactics they're supposed to be playing. And then it's just constant miscommunication and it's tactical fraud. When you're a manager of a national team, especially a team as uh, big as England, I know we, we've not won a national title in a long, 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 long time since 1966, but, but experimenting with formations is not a good way of going with it at all. He got his players in the squad used to the 4-3-3 formation, but now he's trying to play a 3-4-3. Why? If the players are accustomed to a 4-3-3 and it's performed well f for you, why are you then just trying to squeeze more players in to change the formation and in turn taking the familiarity out of your players? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, the doubts with our centre-backs, Harry Maguire, we don't know what's happening with him. We don't know whether Gar Gareth Southgate thinks that he's not good enough, we don't know whether he's going to stick with him in the first team or he's going to experiment with more defenders. That's another issue. Um, our goalkeeper situation, another issue. We keep swapping between Pickford and Pope and Henderson. Just pick one. I think Jordan Jordan Pickford is staying in there just because of his heroic heroics that he did in the 2018 World Cup. What has he done since, since then? Yes, fair enough, he's in an Everton team that are currently performing very, very, very well in the league. But you have to remember, Everton are still conceding a lot of goals and Pickford is at fault for a few of those. My personal opinion, we should put Nick Pope in goal, see how everything gels there. And then if not, we may try out Henderson. But the reason why I don't think we should go with Henderson as our first choice keeper is because he's not first choice at his own club. But I'm not the manager, it's Gareth Southgate. So what he needs to do is, is pull his finger out, choose, choose one, stick with him in the England team. Another issue, our midfield. It's not because we don't have quality players in the, in the midfield, it's just because Gareth Southgate is so biased towards certain players. He's got these, he's got loads of favourites in the England squad. Uh, he constantly plays Eric Dyer. Don't know why, he's seriously not good enough. You need an engine in the, mid, in the midfield and you only need one. You don't need three, which is what Gareth Southgate tries to do in the midfield. He tries to put too many in. Just have Jordan Henderson as the box to box CDM, I'd probably go with Declan Rice, and then right centre mid, my personal opinion, we should go with Jack Grealish. And the reason why we should is because there's a there's a lack of creative spark in that midfield. Uh, and, and the connection between the midfield and attack, it just isn't there. It's so blocky when it gets to like the final third of play because the connection between the attack and the, the midfield, it's non-existent, it doesn't exist. It's awful. I think the tactics that he needs to do, it has to be more consistent. What he has to do is connect the midfield to the attack. And one of the ways they could do that is bringing Jack Grealish in to that midfield. To quote Gary Neville, when he was criticizing Gareth Southgate, he said, the issue with the 3-4-3 formation uh, within the last two games is you end up with eight defensive players on the pitch, including the goalkeeper which doesn't make any sense. Like I said, the connection between the midfield and strikers is just non-existent. Because what they're playing with is three centre-backs, two wing-backs on the wings, and then two DMs in the middle, and then you've just got the front three. It just doesn't work like that. You can't have eight players in defensive positions and then just expect three players to do all the attacking work by themselves. It doesn't work like that. Like Gary Neville said, it's so predictable. Especially with Kane playing as a striker, he doesn't move anywhere, He's a, he, is a, he is a striker. So what you end up with is nine players on the field who stay where they are. They're very, there's no flexibility. So you've got two wingers who can kind of do whatever they want. But then you've got Harry Kane who's just staying in the middle. Then you've got the defensive mid, defensive midfielders, the wing backs, and all of the centre backs and, and the goalkeeper obviously being more defensive. 
So you've got eight players in one half and you've got three in the other half trying to do all the attacking. Not to mention that the, that the striker isn't willing to interchange between his wingers. It, it's just, it's so predictable. And to run this just before we start doing the Euros, obviously the Euros are in 2021 now, but we don't have that many games before we start the, the tournament. So why is he now, all of a sudden now, thinking of bringing in a new formation? It just doesn't make any sense. And to add on the issues with Mason Greenwood and Phil Foden, for the second consecutive England camp, we've had another three players break COVID-19 rules. That is Ben Chilwell, Jaden Sancho, and Tammy Abraham, all of which weren't involved in the first game because of this reason. So that's now five players who have done it. Surely they would have learned from Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood, hang on, we shouldn't be doing this, but they did it anyway. As a player, as someone who, you, who people look up to you a lot, um, you shouldn't be doing things like that. I know there's too much pressure on people and I know that we shouldn't really look at them in this high regard because they're human beings after all, they're not all, all perfect. But it's unacceptable to look at how Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood, what they did and how inappropriate it was and how much slander they got for doing it. Why do you then turn around and do it? it just doesn't make any sense. But yes, to sum up for me, Gareth Southgate's just not, he isn't good enough. He should not be England manager at all. He shouldn't have ever really got the job. I don't really know an alternative that we, we could bring in, to be fair. I don't know who would work. I can't really think of anyone. Maybe Eddie Howe, now that he's out of a job, but will the national team be appealing enough for him? I don't know. There's not many England managers who've really brought any success to the nation, but yeah. It, to sum everything up, Gareth Southgate should not be manager. We should be sticking with a certain formation. We'll be sh we should be sticking with 4-3-3, considering that's what all the players are used to, and stop trying to mix up all the formations all the time. We should go with a more creative midfield, uh, and we should, uh, Gareth Southgate in particular, should drop all of his favourites that he's got and just pick players in terms of form and how well they play together. Uh, that should be the way it's always been. That's the way every other nation plays. If they're not on form, take them out, Gareth. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and put in, in the comments your opinion of Gareth Southgate, what he should do with the England team. Who do you think should replace him as manager if he does leave? Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification to, to be notified when I next upload, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.